like this. Amen. We believe that whenever we gather like this, God is in our midst. Amen. It is going to change us. It's going to transform us. They said in Psalm chapter 84 verse 7 or 6, it said, uh, As many as appear before the Lord in Zion, they go from strength to strength. He said, they go from strength to strength. So when we appear before the Lord like this, one sure, one thing is sure that we will never return back as we came. Amen. So we we'll go from strength to strength. Amen. Whenever in times of worship, praise, just be sensitive to receive. Amen. And while the word of God is coming, I just want to open up your heart. I trust the Lord to speak to you. I'm nothing. I'm just a vessel that the Lord is going to use this morning. But trust in whom we believe. Trust in whom we are. You are here. Amen. So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank God for this opportunity. It is a Sunday. You know, once it is a Sunday, it's a um, day consecrated to the Lord. And also to the, our leadership, our bishop, for trusting us again to be here to speak to you. And to communicate the truth of the word. Oh. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, um, I would like to have your attention to the word of God. Uh, you know, we have our Bishop introduced to us the main visions of this year. It's a crystal scientific message. So, we are, we are learning uh, the Bible from Genesis to Revelations, Christ. The center, Christ, everything. In Colossians chapter 1, from verse 15 to 20, we are learning how Christ is and how Christ, what he does or what he's doing and who he is. Amen? So, um, the word of God, it is uh, a tool of transformation. It is a tool uh, given to a believer to be a transformer, or to be pure. Apostle Paul was teaching in the Bible, uh, uh, in the book of um, uh, Acts chapter 20, he said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Acts chapter 20, verse 32, he said, I, I commend you to God. It is a commandment for a believer to be transformed by the word of God, to be built up by the word of God, to be transformed, it is a commandment. When we are transformed to the word of God, we are gaining mastery, we are looking like him, we are becoming as Christ like. He said, this is the mind be in you as it was in Christ. It is through the word of God. We are gaining the mind of Christ. It is through the word of God. Amen? Are we blessed? Yes. So we are going through the word of God. Uh, before starting my message, um, I will, I will start by a scenario which happened in the, in the Bible. Jesus was teaching his disciples. Uh, in, the, in the book of Matthew chapter 16, he was teaching his disciples from verse 13. Uh, coming to Philippi, to Caesarea, he asked them a question. Who do men say that the Son of God I am? It was a question that Jesus noticed that in his time there were many teachings or the main, there were many uh, teachers but he introduced his message by asking them a question who do men say I the son of God I am amen so he was he asked a question so they bring up philosophy they bring up what they are they, they know he says some says you are Elias some say you are Jeremiah some say you are one of the prophets some say you are maybe John the Baptist they were not wrong, probably on their perspective. It was maybe their point of view. But they didn't know. So now Jesus come up himself to say, okay, now those they are outside, they say this, I am Elijah, I am Jeremiah, I'm one of the prophets, or oh, I'm one of who they are there. So now you, you are in the house. Who do you, who say you that I am? Is Jesus asking them a question? So my concern in verse 15, when Jesus asked them a question to say, who now I am? Amen? So um, as he asked them a question to know who he is, uh, my title this morning it is, I am. Moses introduced, uh, Moses has been introduced to God 
by name said I am in the book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 14 he said if I stand before Pharaoh and Pharaoh will ask me a question who sent to this is don't tell him many things say only I am so I am is a general name given to God but it can have many tributes or many attributes Jesus is I am I am the way I am I am the life I am I am the truth I am I am the word but this morning I'll teach I'll talk about Jesus I am as the word or the word of God amen See, I am so we are talking about Christocentric oh the names of Jesus he is the way the life and the truth he is the light of the world it is everything these are qualifications or attributes of Jesus but the name that he gave to Moses he said I am so I am the word or the word of God uh, you can go the Bible gives us different perspectives concerning the word or the word of God different perspective concerning the word or the word of God so I will talk on two or three views uh, which I found important and I know revelation is progressive we must uh, I can talk on this and someone also can compare so we are going from glory to glory different perspective so the first perspective I would like to share is um, the word of God you see as I written down that you see the expression the word of God mostly refers to a divine message or to a collection of those divine messages yes. you can see in the book of Luke chapter 11 verse 28 the Bible says but he said ye rather bless a day that hear the word of God and keep it a message not only a message but a divine message bless a day that hear the word of God and keep it so you hear the word of God you keep it faith comes by hearing not only by hearing but by hearing the word of God you can hear everything and anything but that one it is only the word of God because the Bible though it's a Christocentric a book you can see the Bible any kinds of words donkey spoke in the book in the Bible so everything is there but now the Bible as I say is a divine message or a collection of those messages given to a man so Apostle, Apostle Paul um, um, I think in the book of Hebrews he said though I come to you Hebrews chapter 10 he said I come to you as though in the volume of a book he came as in the volume of a book Amen um, secondly I'll go, you can go the Bible as or the word as a title of a person the word as a title of a person the only person in the bible who has been introduced as a word is only jesus no man can stand and say i am the word talking about that word as a person the words also appears in the bible as a title for jesus christ both as a spirit in heaven and as a human on earth so some may say maybe he was a word only in heaven so you walk on earth as a human right but he said it was the word revelation chapter 19 verse 18 he said he was he the word he jesus he was clothed with a vesture dipped in a blood and his name is called the word of god and um, if we look in the book of John chapter 1 verse 14 it says and the word was made flesh coming from a divinity or deity 
to become a flesh. I say it dwell among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the one, as the only begotten of the Father, feel full of grace and truth. You know, um, while I was meditating, the, um, the book of John 1, 13, uh, it goes in the same um, perspective as the book of Exodus. You know, God was working with the children of Israel, but when Moses went to uh, Sinai to call to have the Ten Commandments, but they defied themselves, they made um, what uh, a bull of the worship, the bull, and God said, I, I will no longer dwell with man. So he said, you now after that defiance, this God talked to Moses, said, uh, I want now you to build a tabernacle. So he gave uh, 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 if Moses now the the um the way to build a tabernacle where God can dwell. So now when we when we read the book of Exodus, you understand that God now made Himself or oh, oh, gave to um to Moses a a a a, 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 divine, a, a design how he, he can build a place where he may dwell. You will see that God coming from heaven he dwell with men. He, he take a like as a flesh. In the Old Testament, but in the, in the New Testament, he came as in a Jesus. Uh, he came in Jesus, but in the Old Testament, he said, "I will dwell in a tabernacle." That's what we said. God tabernacle with man, or oh, he mingled with man. So that's the, the the book of John, chapter one, verse fourteen. Okay, in thirdly, I will talk about. If you can go, um, the word serves as God spoken man. He served as a steward. We have been taught uh, on Wednesday that Jesus was a steward. I did not came to serve myself. He didn't came to, to be saved, but he came to serve. Amen. We have been taught to be Jesus was a steward. John chapter 12 verse 49 to 50. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father say unto me, so I speak. A steward. We are coming from um, coming back from the word of God now. The word of God, as I say, is a divine message or given to a person. So now we are going to understand clearly the word um, the word of God. You know, Jeremiah before introducing his message, uh a prophetic book of Jeremiah, you will see as a message clearly coming from heaven or coming from heaven to him. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4, before introducing the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah said that then the word of God or the word of the Lord there is um, Jehovah, the word of Lord came unto me saying, go to verse 5, the word of the Lord, or the word of God, came unto me, saying, Before I found you, before I found, before I, you were found in the womb of your mother, I knew you. He said, Before I found thee in the baby, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the, thy womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee, I, a, I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. You see, you see, it was a word coming to him. It was a divine message coming to him. As a believer, we have been given a tool. We have been given a message to everyone, the word of God. So in our days, we have the gospel. Amen? We have the gospel. The only message has been designed or has been signified to God to be known to all the earth. It is the gospel. 
to know who is Christ, what he has done to save all mankind. Amen. It is a divine message that has been given to us. You may not say, I'm not part of them that the gospel has been given. You're not part of those, maybe a great, uh, we say maybe the gospel is only for preachers. The gospel is only for those us, uh, motivation speakers. No, the gospel has been given to all men. You are an engineer. You must preach the gospel in your what? In your domain. Amen. Amen. When you are teaching, or maybe uh, I, I was discussing with my little, when you are maybe probably a doctor and maybe a sick person coming to you uh, before praying or uh, before maybe uh, going to procedures on everything, you you pray, you lay hands on him and you or on him and you pray, and after that you present the gospel. You say Jesus loves you. A message has been given to us, a divine message. Christ was the center in the gospel. Amen? Uh, the same message is again in the book of um, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 9. Samuel was before ordained so be part. He said, as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, by the servant to pass on before us, and he passed on by stand down still a while that I may show thee the word of God. That I may show thee the word of God. So you may, you may see in the in the scriptures in the Old Testament how they define how they 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 took the word of God for them it was from God directly. It is maybe, um, I want to hear God and I will speak to you. I want to hear God and I will speak to maybe it was given to a prophet. It was only given to a certain categories of people that the word of God was very scarce in the, in the, in the, in the, in the ancient time. The word of God was not given to all men because uh, uh, it was only people that were ordained to serve in the presence of God, only to kings or to priests. But for us in the new day, for us in this generation, it has been given to all men. So that's why sometimes uh, uh, when judgment or maybe the gospel will be uh, the time, the day of the Lord will come, people will say, I, I didn't hear the gospel. I, I'm not sure that in this time the gospel is maybe at 85% everywhere. Everywhere the word of God is. So we have to make sure that that word of God must be spread. That divine message must be spread. Amen? Amen. Are we blessed? Yes. Glory to God. Secondly, we are going to see as a person, him only, the king of kings, the monarch of universe. The Lord of Lords. Uh, Jesus has been uh, personified himself as the Word, has been personified himself as the beginning. In the book of um, John, chapter 1, verse 1, if you can go and give us John, chapter 1, verse 1, say, In the beginning was the Word. If you can read it for me. And the Word was. And the Word was. Chapter 2. That same was in the beginning. And all things were made by him. Mm-hmm. And without him was not made Amen. Glory to God. You see, he said it was in the beginning. And that same was in the beginning. You see, it is not Jesus, uh, he, he was the, he, he is a deity. It's not like his life started when he came out of the womb of Mary. If you hear that kind of gospel, maybe you have to pay attention. Because Jesus, his life didn't start where he came, he, 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 he came on earth. His, li- his life started in the beginning. That word was in the beginning. It was God. 
Amen. So we can see also as Jesus, uh, the firstborn of all creation. And this is a point that I'm mentioning. We can uh, we'll tap on two or three points um, about the deity or how Jesus was. Jesus was. Jesus is the firstborn of all creation. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 to 15. If you can give us, you can read Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 to 15. The Bible says who had delivered us from powers of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of our sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the first bone of all of every creation. Jesus, the firstborn of every creation. Secondly, the word is God's son. We have to believe this. If you don't believe this, I don't know. You have to believe that Jesus is God's son. Amen? In the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 15. Are we together? First John chapter 4 verse 15. He said, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God and God dwelleth in him and he in God. We should confess that he is the Son of God. We must believe this. This, can, this has to be in our minds that Jesus is the Son of God. While, Peter, while Jesus asked the question to Peter, who do men say that I am? What was the answer of, of, Peter, of Peter? You are the Christ. And you are the Son of God. You have to believe this. Many, many people believe that Jesus is the prophet. I know, huh? You see, huh? They say he's a prophet. He's not the Son of God. He's a prophet. Have mercy on us, God. Thirdly, the word possess God like. In God like, I will give some attributes. The words of Jesus, the word in bracket, the words possess God like attributes. Those are attributes I'm going to mention. The words were, as I mentioned, the word was a God. John 1 1, we have read. Secondly, the reflections of God's glory and the exact representation of this very being. I'm repeating, the reflection of God's glory and the exact representation of this very being with God. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 2 to 3. Can give us Hebrews chapter 1. The Bible says, uh, I'm starting from verse 2. He said, Ah, in these last days, spoken unto us by his Son, Jesus, whom he had appointed heirs over all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory, Jesus being the brightness. So if you have to look God, we have to look at Jesus. If we have to see God, we have to see God. If we have to see God, we have to look at Christ. He was the exact representation of God. You know, the, 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 the Pharisees was, um, I think it, Jesus was speaking to was talking to his disciples. He said, if you see me, you can see God. And they said, well, if, I think it's Philip said, show us the Father. If you can see me, you will see directly the Father. He said, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, the same as God is, the same as Jesus is. If you read in the book, if you read in the Bible that this was Jesus, and the same way you believe it is the same way God is. Express image of his person, upholding all things by, by the word of his power. When he had by himself built our sins, sat down on the right 
hand of a majesty on high. Thirdly, the word rules as a king. These are attributes of Jesus. The word rules as a king. Revelation chapter 19, verse 12 and 13. The word rule as a king, you, you may read by yourself. And the word is also named King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You have been taught here that the kingdom of we need a king in the kingdom. And a king, and a kingdom is controlled by the mindset of a king. So whenever you, you enter a city and you find out those people, they are the ages. They are working. So what all, all of them they are working like anyhow. Maybe probably their mindset is controlled by a king. So in, the, in our kingdom, we have been taught that uh, we are ruled by a monarch who is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. So we are under his, his control, his belief system. So if God says we turn at the right, all of us will turn at the right. We don't say we say turn at the right, so maybe we are to turn at the left. Maybe probably I'll find salvation here. No, he's a king. And the Bible says, where is the, the whatever or wherever there is of it, the word of a king, there is power. So a king, you may know um, um, the art or the possession of a king, but it's power. So a king doesn't speak anyhow, carelessly. So um, I'll bless you tomorrow and then later on you change his mind. No, a king, when you see a king, you will see power. So this is, these are attributes of God. He was also named King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Revelation chapter 19, verse 16. The Bible says, And he had on his specials and on his type a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Are we together now? Yes. These are attributes of Jesus. And I'm telling you, I'm going to talk about I'm going directly to the word serves as God's spoken man. John chapter 12 verse 49 to 50. So I've already written that verse. So I'm going to go with um, the effect. So let me just speak on, on, on stewardship as, as also um, to make us understand. You see, the only motive of Jesus, the motive of Jesus that are pushing to serve or to push him to serve as he served, it was love. It is the only right motive, it is being it, it has to be in every steward love. If by any means you are motivated by your passion of maybe to be seen by man, you are wrong. Only love can be the right motivation. To serve in this kingdom. If you talk about love, every love, uh, when you talk about love, you talk about love, you have humility, love, have patience, love, have everything. That's the only right motive for a steward. As, you know, Jesus accepted. You see, when when I I probably believe that you know when God was about to send a man to rescue the humanity. I think the task was very hard for an angel to bury it. I'm, I'm not sure an angel can do that. Can't. But Jesus accepts that decision say, I'll go and serve them. And he accepted and came, he died as a man. He died a shame death in the bit a curse between a thief maybe and, and, and a sorcerer. And at, at, the, at the same place, they were insulting. But he, he accepted true love. This is the right motive for a steward. So, you are a steward, you are a worker, you are any, 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 any members of the church. Just press on love. Press on love much and you will not complain a lot. Sometimes when we complain, I don't know when we complain so much maybe we are trying to deviate a little bit let us go to effects of the word of god the word of god has an effect has a great 
impact on our lives. You see, um, when people receive the gospel, they are not only saved, they are changed, they are transformed, they are built, they are, they are being healed. You know, those are effects of the word of God. Those are effects that the word, the word of God can do in a man. Those are effects. So we'll let us see. And the word of God gives joy. We are going to read in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, verse 16. The word of God gives joy and rejoice. Jeremiah 15, 16. The Bible says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and they, thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Thy word was found, I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing. So we find the word of God, we rejoice. When we hear the word of God, we rejoice. Sometimes when we, we, you eat, I don't know if it happens to you, you meditate on the word of God, and then one scripture back on you, you jump, oh glory. Ah, you know, it's, it's, it's powerful. You can't get as if you were, you were in the scenario. Yeah. <laughs> Is it happened to you too? Yes. Ah. I, I, some, sometimes I, 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 I went round, I ran, I just gone mad. I this, this thing, I don't know people, they are doubting the scriptures like this, but you are jumping as if it's a fire in your bone. That's why Jeremiah said, I think in Jeremiah chapter 20, he said, I, 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 want, I, I want to stop to speak about God, but your word is a fire in my bones. It is shut up in my bones. He wants to, to, to keep his mouth. He said, I can't. Your word is within my bones. It's like a fire. It consumes you. When you read it, you meditate upon it. You went out, you speak in it. It transforms you. It gives you security. It gives you confidence. It gives you confidence. Um, let us go again. The word gives light and understanding. Light and understanding. Psalm 119, verse 130. He said, the entrance, when it enters, when the word enters, is an entrance of thy words giveth light it gives understanding unto the simple scriptures are not complicated they are not complicated he said even to the simple it gives light you may wonder how men they never went to school but if they open the bible as if they, are, they, they went to, to, to school of theology, but they never studied, they went to school maybe to study, to follow the curriculum, but the word of God, they trust in the word of God, and God opened up their spirit. When they, they speak, you will, find, you will see the difference between the one who is, is, is maybe uh, cultivated, the one is, but in when he speaks, you will see the difference. That's the, the the attribute of the, the, the works of the word of God. He said it gives light and understanding even to the simple one. You trust God to be to enlighten you. You trust it, you trust God to give you understanding. Go to the scriptures. Are we together now? The word of God gives strength. It gives strength. You, you may read in the book of um, Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1 to 2 he said when he speaks to me when he speaks to me his word enters me and I get strength secondly I tell you he said the word of God brings healing Rev um, the book of Psalm 100 chapter 20 he sent his word and the word healed them He sent his word and the word healed them. Also, we have the word of God brings deliverance. Brings deliverance. John 8 32, in a context, he said, And ye shall know the truth, 
What is the truth? What is the truth? He said, he said to John that this word, um, if you, you can you can help me with a, a good interpretation of the word. He said, when is John had the revelation in the book of um, uh, of Revelation, he said, don't take any, any part of this book. I think it's mm, a hard time. Whether you accept it or not, there is always a hard time. Whether things are not working, you can pray, you can fast, you can do whatever you do, you sow seed, you do everything, but nothing happens. This is a, a stage we, we have to understand that it's happened in, in, in the lives of everyone. A pastor you admire, a man of God you admire, or a captain of industry you admire, everyone we go through seasons of pain. But the, the thing is, the reaction that you have toward that season matters. That's why there is peace. Let's read in the book of Psalm chapter 80, 85 verse 8. He said, I will hear what God the Lord will speak. I will hear what God the Lord will speak. He will speak peace. These are speakings of God. You want to take a decision and you are confused. If you, you, you want to take that decision and you feel in your heart like there is no peace, leave it. Not of, it's not of God. The sign of God, peace. Yes. You have the peace in mind. Peace of heart. You don't need a prophet to tell you that maybe you have to take these decisions. As long as you have to sit down, you trust God. Oh God, speak to me. Speak to me. And then you find out over, overnight, you have peace. Take that decision. This is the speakings of God. He speaks peace. I give you my peace, saying the Lord. I give you my peace. And Apostle Paul said that ah, the peace of God surpasses every understanding. You can't understand. While all men complain at the same time, but you, no matter you, 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 you don't complain, you just, I just give glory to God. This is a sign of maturity. Not everyone has that ability that everything is not working, but you are giving thanks to God. I'm telling you, it's hard. But only you are matured. You are the Word of God, and you know that God never changed. He remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Done. Yes. They will say whatever they want, you speak, and you hold on to the Word of God. You have peace, and you, walk, you move on. Amen. Amen. So this attribute, when we were about not to talk about what the personal word done to us, I'm about to start to stop here due to the time. You know, the, the word Jesus as a person, he did to us what no man can do. He brings redemption, salvation. Those are, he said, I am the word. So he is the, you know, he is the key to the kingdom, the only key to the kingdom. He did, you know, when you, you talk about Jesus in the book of um, Isaiah, he said, he said, he is the key of the house of David. They didn't say he is the keys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when he, he was speaking to, the, to his disciples, he said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. These are two different words. He said, I am the, you have maybe wisdom, it's a key. You have knowledge, it's a key. Those are keys to the kingdom. You see? But the, the way to enter to the Father is only through Jesus. That's why we, it matters to us to only to always value Jesus. We value Jesus, it is only Him. No way to power, no way to everything that we want. Amen. Can we raise up on our feet? Oh
the more we know you, the more we are changed, the more we are transformed, we are gaining mastery, we are gaining stature as Jesus who exceeds in knowledge, in favor, in stature. Father, we want to know you, we want to know you, to experiment the fullness of you, the fullness of your glory which you reserve for us. Thirdly, pray to your stewardship that God give you the ability to serve as He wants. Serve without complaint. Serve without asking in, re in, 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 in return to God. Just serve Him. Don't ask. Sometimes when you ask what God can do for me, it is selfishness. When always you ask, God do to me this, good to do to me this, do to me this. But when you grow up, you are dealing with what I can do for God. Talk to me. Talk to me. Pray in the name of Jesus. Father, Father, in the day past of God, you will always we are we, we were always asking. We were always asking, but we didn't realize that the harvest is plenty. The harvest is plenty. The harvest is plenty. The harvest is plenty, but few laborers, few laborers, oh God, give us the ability, oh God, to do also, to do, to do, not to be always hearers, to be always limited by hearing, but to do, to do, to do, to do, to do.